Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Mount Sinai for the uh, short didactic lecture on kind of the choice of wires in the BTK toolbox that all of you should uh, utilize in tackling lesions to make complex lesions simpler and faster in your hands. So again, this is just an overview, but I think, I think what's important to remember is some principles of BTK interventions. So what, what you have is uh, you know, optimal perfusion when everything is intact, okay, and that's the top line, and that's, that's kind of what we want. But actual perfusion may occur when, when, when there are areas of st stenosis within the vessel which may be less than optimal perfusion because you have multiple stenotic lesions. However, there's the metabolic demand is, is stable, so the patient either is asymptomatic or does not have a chronic wound or a non-healing wound. When the metabolic demand increases because of trauma or, or any sort of um, ulceration, then, then the actual perfusion is not enough in order to heal the wound. So in, in, in this part right here, the patient undergoes revascularization. And then again, we increase the perfusion to above the metabolic demand and the patient heals. And when the patient heals, obviously the ulcer is healing at this point, and then the patient restenosis, and the question comes up whether, whether you're gonna need um, uh, long-term patency in these type of lesions, and I think this is good food and fodder for thought to see, to see what happens. Now, most of the times, and not in this particular case, we, we use angiosomes, and I think it's important to talk a little bit about this. The angiosomes are basically derived from plastic surgery where they felt that a certain part of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the tissue was supplied by a certain branch. And you can see here, this is the anterior tibial dorsalis pedis angiosome. This is the posterior tibial medial lateral plantar uh, 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 angiosomes in the, in the uh, plantar aspect of the foot. And this is the perineal angiosome uh, at this level over here. So, so what are the things that we talked about in, in, the, in our case and illustrated in the case? So when you talked about lesion crossing, I think a, a nice principle to have is to downsize. When you go from the iliac to the fempop to the tibial perineal, you're basically not only going from an old, uh, larger systems to smaller systems, but you're also in terms of wires, you're going from 035 to 018 uh, or 035 in the fempop all the way into tibial perineal, which is pertinent in this particular case uh, to the 014 or the 018. And also you have a simplified, uh, you know, when, when you start thinking about wires, and we spoke about this as well, you want to you simplify your schema, your wire schema to safe, slippery, sharp, and supportive, okay, which will then allow you to choose the wire uh, per lesion. So in general, what's a safe wire? Well, I define it as a soft, atraumatic tip, routine stenosis, and an 035 example is a VersaCore, an 018 example is a V18, and a 014 is a Pro Water or a BMW. Supportive are, 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 are stiffer shafts for device delivery, not really ideal for crossing. This can be the super core, the steel core, uh, if it's an 018. An 014 can be the Sparta core, the Iron Man, the stabilizer, <clears throat> and obviously <clears throat> many more than, than, than you can actually say in this particular talk. Slippery, slippery wires are hydrophilic or jacket or coated. Less they, they, have, they have tactile feel, I don't know why it says less, and ideal for calcified lesions or complex lesions. Again, like we talked about, they're good for subintimal approaches. Uh, however, with the benefit of slipperiness, <clears throat> you also have a higher risk of dissection and or perforation. And you saw in the case how we were very careful <clears throat> not to use that wire as our workhorse wire, especially both the, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, command wire and the, um, the field of wire. You can see here you have the 035 glide wire is an example of a slippery 035 wire. 018 is a uh, V18, a Gladius or a Gold Tip M, and an 014 is a Command Pilot or Whisper, and again, many, many more. So here's an example of where you, you use a slippery wire. You could see here, I don't know, if, you could see here a very diffuse, complex lesion. And then you could see here when I play this video, and this is all courtesy of, uh, of, of a bunch of my colleagues, Ethan Creek, uh, uh, Korngold, as well as uh, Dr. Sahil Parikh, you can see here how this wire goes down very, very well. Again, a good example of how the uh, slipperiness um, of, of the wire really helps you to transverse the lesion, okay? So when you, when you keep going, now here's another example again. You have a very diffuse lesion and you have a, what looks like a total occlusion, but again, very simply, the wire goes down very, very smooth. You're able to traverse very easily with a slippery wire and all the way down, showing that sometimes you think you might need a lot of support, but generally, uh, or, or, or sharpness, and generally you, you, you can just basically go uh, with a slippery wire. 
As far as sharp wires are concerned, you, they're generally tapered, an uncoated tip, ideal for difficult CTO crossing, drilling, and or re-entry. You know, um, we didn't have an example of that in this case, but clearly, you know, I think this is a very important part of what you do. They also have a higher risk of perforation, and, 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 and generally, uh, the, you don't want to treat the, uh, these, over these wires after lesion crossing. Uh, as you saw, we took, I wanted to remove the fielder XT and go with, uh, with another wire. So the 035s, really, probably the Tarumo uh, Glide would be the one. But 018s, you have the Ashtado 30, the Connect 250T, and the 014, the Confianza Pro, or the Win 200T. So here's an example. We're unable to cross from above. From below, we went ahead with the command wire with pedal access. And you can see here that the, the wire is, doesn't have the per penetration. We switched that to a Confianza Pro wire. And then when, when you see the Confianza Pro, it again has the ability to push through and pop right through. So, so this is a general uh, thing that you can use to divide your wires mentally and bucket them for yourself to, sli to slippery, safe, sharp, and supportive, and then choose the right anatomy for you to go ahead and do it. The other one thing I want to touch on is, uh, is support catheters. Uh, you, you want to go ahead and use angle uh, support catheters as needed. You saw that we went ahead and used a Caravel catheter. But again, these can also be divided into 035s and, and, and 014s and, 018, uh, and 018s. And I think generally speaking, below the knee, 018 and, 03, uh, and 014 play the major role. Other things you want to think about is whether they're angled, braided, double, uh, double or triple braided, crossing profile and pushability, and we spoke all about all that during the case. Again, it's a very short presentation. I thank you for, for logging in and watching us, and I hope this has been useful and will help you guys um, uh, and uh, you know, really do a good job in taking care of your patients. Don't hesitate to email me at prakash.krishnan at mountsana.org uh, with any um, uh, questions, any, any, anything that you'd like to discuss. I'd like to connect with you and speak with you. Thank you again. Have a great day.